Hello and happy Sunday. It's Kelly with ifyouhaveanegg.com and today is Sunday, December the 29th. We survived Christmas. We're surviving here in just a few minutes, but this is Sunday, December the 29th. I am Kelly with ifyouhaveanegg.com. We are ready to talk about all things holidays. Hopefully, fingers crossed, Facebook is going to cooperate because I have a lot of reading to do for you all later and I'm going to need to be able to see the comments on my iPad. So, it looks like a couple of people are coming in. Somebody say hi, hello, so that we know that you're there. Speaking of hi and hellos, had somebody complain this week. So if you do not want to say hi, hello, if you're watching this later, please just grab that little scroll bar and go on over to about 10 minutes because um, you'll miss most of it. And Irma, Irma's our first one. Hello, Irma. Hello, Trish. If you want to say hi and hello, we love it. Hello, Claudie. So we all like to greet each other. Wish we could hug each other, but you know, can't because we're you know, because we're here. Hello, Tag. Oh, and she's on time. Hello, Barbara from the Crossroads. And thank you, Barbara. I have on a t-shirt. But anyway, hello, Robin. Hello, Carol Lou. Hello, Sherry from Connecticut. So yeah, everybody who's here and loves to say hi and hello. And Stephanie is back. Hello, Stephanie. Hello, Marlene. Yeah, please do say hi and hello. And if you are brand new, let us know because we would love to welcome you. Hello, Sherry. Hello, Teresa from humid, rainy, or rainy, humid Kentucky. Yeah, we're getting in here too, so thanks for sending it down our way. Hello, Sandra from Dingman's Ferry. Hello, Bernice from Northeast Texas. Hello, Michelle. Um, yeah, so we love to say hi and hello. Hello, Jessica. I welcome you all. Love to say hi. Hello, Evie. Hello, Sandy from Northeastern Kansas. I think that makes this special. Hello, Donna. Anyway, if you're watching it later on YouTube, it's just youtube.com. Search if you have an egg and you don't want to say how hi and hello, grab the scroll bar going over to about 10 minutes. Everybody else, hello. I would love to talk to you and say hi even later, even if you're watching this on demand later. And let's see, we have a couple people roll in. Hi, Linda from Florida. Hello, Marion from Pennsylvania. Jessica's new. So everybody, welcome, Jessica. Hello. We're so happy that you're with us tonight. And Jessica, are you new to Weight Watchers too or just new to our little, to our live chats? Hello, Kathy. Hello, Marlene. Hello, Audrey. Hi, Shirley and Merry Christmas. Aloha, Kathy. Oh, and Casey's here. Casey, I have on my shirt that you got me. Casey got me this shirt. And if you know what it is, you get an extra Bravo sticker if you know what this shirt is from. Hello, Sylvia from Canada. Hello, Betty from Memphis. And Carol says, I'm already freezing up. Sorry. Sorry, you might have to go out and go back in. Hello, Lisa. Yeah, and I do hope that everybody's getting ready for the new year. Hello, Marlene from Largo, Florida. Hi, Nancy. And yep, y'all welcome Jessica because she is brand new. And hello, Susan. It's been a long time since she's been with us live. Sandra loves my nails. We'll talk about those in just a second. And yeah, and Casey just said, you're wearing the shirt I got you. Yay. Yeah, and Casey, and I already did my nails. So I'm ahead of the game tonight. I don't know why I'm ahead. I guess because we had a day off maybe. Hello. Um, let's see. Oh yeah. Sorry. Claudia was welcoming Jessica. Everybody's welcoming Jessica. That is awesome. Hello, Pam. Yes, it is a long time no see. Hello, everybody. Hello, Roberta. Yeah. Great. Thank you all so much for welcoming Jessica. That is awesome. Hello, Alicia. Hello, Lacey. So we're going to have a great chat tonight. We are we have all survived Christmas. It is over. It is in the rearview mirror. Hello, Patty from West Virginia. And Teresa. Teresa, yes, I said Weight Watchers. Hmm, me? Are you talking to me? And yeah, and it's been a while for Robin. Robin's ready to hit the reset button. I think a lot of us are ready to hit that. Hello, Sandy. Oh, Jessica lost 55 pounds this year, and she's been off track for the holidays and hopes to lose more. That is awesome. That is awesome. You are so far ahead of the game. Hello, Lynn. And yes, Trish says, Trish says she hopes everybody had a wonderful Christmas. So if you're watching this later on demand, sorry, you won't be able to see these comments unless you go back. Um, oh, and uh, Trish got her t-shirt out of the mailbox today. Awesome. Yeah, and I can't, I can't go back and see the whole, the rest of it. But anyway, hello, Darlene from Richton, Mississippi. Yeah, if you're watching this later, though, on demand, if you're watching it on YouTube, you'll have to scoot back over to Facebook so that you can see all these comments and see what I'm talking about. Hello, uh, Melanie. Hi, Pamela. Yep, and Mindy's back after a long time away, and she is so glad to be back, and we are glad to have her. Hello, Angela. Hello, Sandy. Oh, oh Sandy says, bravo. Myra says she fell off the wagon, and she's not sure she'll recover. <clears throat> okay, so Myra, this wasn't planned as part of the chat, but let's just go ahead and say all of us have fallen off the wagon, and that is exactly why we're here, because those of us who are currently on the wagon or who are kind of hanging on to the sides of the wagon, we are here to help you back on the wagon. So it's okay. You don't have to flip your wagon over just because you fell off of it. Girls, 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 please don't flip your wagons over. Please don't set them on fire. It's all okay. 
it is okay. Linda says Christmas is over and she has a cruise coming up. She's planning to track every day and walk, walk, walk. I think it's a great idea. And hello, Kathy from Iowa. Yep, and you're great. Everybody is checking in on Meyer. That is awesome. Wanda is with us again live. Great. Trisha went to her meeting today and she lost four pounds this week and made lifetime today. So I think everybody needs to stop for just a second and congratulate Trish. That is awesome. And hello, Larona. Am I pronouncing that correctly? Larona from Muskegee, Muskegee, Oklahoma. Okay, you're really testing me here. So hopefully I just said all that correctly. Sherry sure, got her t shirt. Awesome. Yeah. Great. And yes, we have all had problems. Lacey is exactly right. We have all had problems with food. We wouldn't be here. So, you know, if we could just go, eh, you know, and walk off and leave it, we wouldn't be here. So, and I certainly would not be here. You know, if I could just walk away from food and just leave it, you know, just leave it where it was and not think about it, wouldn't be here. Okay. So we are all in this together. But again, today is Sunday. It is December the 29th. It is almost New Year's. It is almost 2020. Yeah, so we have a lot to talk about, as usual. First thing is, if anybody knows what my t-shirt is from, this is what one of the things Casey got me for Christmas. If anybody knows where the t-shirt is from, it's not a big deal. Has nothing to do with Weight Watchers. Absolutely nothing to do with Weight Watchers. But you just get a, hey, you know, if you know where, it, where it's from. The nails. I actually have started doing them ahead of time. Um, and so I got them done, and I love them. Um, in case y'all haven't been here before, Casey um, does Color Street, and you can get these at colorstreet.com forward slash C-N Bohannon, B-O-H-A-N-A-N. And this, when I'm doing these, it keeps me from eating. So the only thing I can do while I'm doing them, hello Susie, the only thing I can do while I'm doing them, oh wait, Kimberly, whoa, wait, 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 what happened with Kimberly? I missed it, I missed it. Hello Rhonda, good to see you. Oop, Robin says Disney, no it has nothing to do with Disney. Mm -mm. Nothing to do with Oak Ridge. Barbara, nope, 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 nope. But um, but when I do these, first of all, it's a reward for myself. It's a non-food reward, and we all need to be, you know, we all need to be mindful of non-food rewards into this new decade that we are rolling into. Um, and it keeps me from eating while I'm doing them because you don't want to mess them up. Hello, Rita, and you know, so I can just sip tea or something. Hello, Vicky, while I'm doing them, and I don't bite the sides of my fingers when I have them on. So thank you very much, Casey, for introducing me to these. The color that I have on today is called Good Chill to All. I do not know if they still have any of these because it was one of the special holiday colors, but they come up with new stuff all the time. And again, it's just um, colorstreet.com forward slash C-N Bohannon. Okay, anyway, so, and Kim says her leader does them as well, just bought a bunch, yeah. I know, they're a great non-food reward. I mean, it's an awesome non-food reward. Um, plus, it keeps your hands busy. Instead of doing this, you're doing this instead of this, which is awesome. Lacey, oh, Lacey said Kimberly also made Lifetime after um, over Christmas. Oh my gosh, Kimberly, that is awesome. So everybody give Kimberly a whoop, whoop. She gets one of those too. That is awesome to do that. So first of all, you all are here the week after Christmas. You're here the week after Christmas, just a handful of days before the new year, before the new decade rolls in. So I'm gonna start us with extra Bravo stickers. Hello, Vicki, extra Bravo stickers. I can't believe you all are here. Yes, I can believe you all are here, but oh, wait, and it's Michelle's first time. She found us on YouTube and it's Michelle, M-I-C-H-E-L-E. -E. Everybody, please welcome Michelle. It's her very first time here. She found us on YouTube. Hey, howdy. Oh, and hello, Sylvia. And Sylvia's, Sylvia's sliding in going whoop, whoop, congratulating the people that have made Lifetime over Christmas. And um, Kathy needs somebody to post the site for the nails. So Casey, if you are still here, please post your site for the nails. Um, I do think they're a great, you know, anyway, a non-food, non-food rewards. We all need some of those in our lives. Um, but yeah, so welcome, welcome, welcome. We are sliding into 2020. Bravo stickers, bravo stickers for everyone who is here this week. That is amazing that y'all are here after Christmas, right before New Year's. You all are you all are like packing in all that you can right before you hit the new decade. So it's almost 2020. Who can believe it? It was 20 years ago that we were all getting our pencils out and making sure that we had extra food and we were panicking, you know, about Y2K. So and yes, Michelle is a new egglet, Rosie. You're exactly right. And we were all worrying about Y2K. 
it's 2020. Guess what? We survived. We survived. Do you know what the definition of survive is? Because that's what we're talking about tonight. This is chat number 154, and it is titled How to Survive and Thrive Through the Holidays. We're going to circle back to last week, but real quick, real quick, the definition of survive is to continue to live or exist, especially in spite of danger or hardship. So 20 years ago, 20 years ago, we were all worried, you know, some of us, a lot of us, you know, we're worried about Y2K, we were worried about surviving, and here we are 20 years later, okay? We're here 20 years later. Hello, Loretta. So I think this gives us a great foundation for what we're going to talk about tonight. First, let's talk a little bit about what's about last week and what's coming up this week. This week, today is Sunday, December the 29th. Tomorrow is December the 30th. It is Casey's 26th birthday. So if she's still here, and even if she's not, everybody please wish Casey, wish Casey a happy 26th birthday. It is tomorrow. Then the next day on Tuesday, that is December the 31st, it's Alyssa's second birthday, and it's New Year's Eve, and it's Casey and Alan's wedding anniversary, Ah, all in one day. Then the next day is New Year's Day. So January the 1st is New Year's Day, in case y'all hadn't figured that out. Then um, Saturday is Alyssa's party. So that's her second birthday party. And then four weeks from Thursday is Super Bowl Sunday. So yeah, we all got excited about Christmas and oh my gosh, there's so much to cram in. But there's that much coming up this week, this week week and then four weeks later we have super bowl sunday so if you all have been with us before you all know that the second most popular day to eat or the day the second with the like second in the running days you know the day that the most food is consumed besides christmas in the united states is super bowl sunday that's coming up four weeks from thursday but we don't need to panic. We made it through Christmas. We survived Christmas and we thrived at Christmas. And we'll talk about that again in a second. But yeah, so four weeks, Super Bowl Sunday. Okay, so we'll talk about that in a few minutes. First things first, last week, last week, who sat their bottom in a chair? So who sat your bottom in a little chair? Give me a thumbs up. If you were here with us live on Facebook tonight on December the 29th, then give me a thumbs up if you sat your bottom in a chair. If you went to a, yep, and Loretta says soon it's spring. Oh yeah. Yep. Uh, oh, Kathy, I wish I knew how to say that. That sounds so cool. Kathy is wishing Casey happy birthday in, was that Polynesian? I wish I knew how to say that. It looks, it looks very pretty written out. It looks very pretty written out. Yeah, I wish we, you're going to have to tell me how to say that. Um, but anyways, if you sat your bottom in a chair, thumbs up. We do not have any physical workshops the seed last week and this week because um because of the holiday because it the christmas eve and new year's eve fall on our meeting night so we did not have any meetings with gwen last week and we will not have any meetings this week but if you sat your bottom in a chair give me a thumbs up if you attended with us here last week give me a heart or if you did both give me a heart yeah so tags a thumbs up sandra did both reed is a thumbs up Teresa is going to a Zumbathon Super Bowl Sunday. That is awesome. Marianne did both. Alicia did both. Carol Lou said, well, after today, my beloved Steelers won't be in it, so she'll only be watching it for the commercials. Mm, just don't eat your tears, okay? Loretta is doing hearts. Linda's thumbs up. Irma did both. Yeah, Lynn didn't have, they didn't have theirs either. Sherry is hearts. Wanda's hearts. And Rosie is thumbs ups and hearts. Michelle is hearts. Okay, so everybody who attended last week, who attended last week or you attended with us last week here are your bravo stickers good job ladies good job good job attending um those of you who did your homework not a lot of you but you know what i can't blame you i really i can't blame you because it was christmas i mean you know who wants to be doing their homework you know during christmas week but your homework from last week was to put a put a holiday recipe or just a favorite recipe that y'all eat around this you know this time of year or a family favorite to put it into your ww app so to put it into the recipe builder and figure out what the actual points are and then to favorite it so the people who did their homework first of all if you did your homework last week here's more bravo stickers um if you didn't tag me in it shame on you it's harder for me to find if you don't tag me in it but um, if you did it, though, we had several people who said, oh, my gosh, it wasn't as many points as I thought it was going to be. 
or they adjusted the servings so that it was less points, you know, per serving because they realized they didn't need a cup or, you know, like a whole cup or a whole half a cup or whatever, you know, they could eat a smaller amount and still be happy with it. Did have a couple of people though that realized that it wasn't as many points as they thought it was, had several people who, um, who adjusted some ingredients so that it would be lower points. Um, okay, and I'm going to sidetrack for just a second. So I'm so glad that Sandra is here. She is actually on my list here. Sandra, who is right here. If you're here with us live, Sandra, who is right here. If you're one of my prayer warriors, pretty please pray for her and for her husband. They are in um, a hospital room tonight in Chicago, but she is right here. Sandra, right there. Please keep checking in on her if you're in our closed group. Um, please keep checking in on Sandra. She's going to need a lot of support. Um, she's going to need a lot of support this week. And um, they, um, he's just not feeling too good. Like, really, really not feeling too good. So, um, Sandra's trying to, you know, keep it together. Um, she was choosing good things at the hospital, you know, yogurt. Um, hello, Stacey. She was choosing good things at the, um, at the hospital, like yogurts. Um, you know, even though she's used to eating non-fat plain Greek yogurt at home and adding her own um, things to it, you know, for flavoring. Um, she did make a good choice at the hospital, I think, and chose yogurt. Um, looked like they had a couple of good options at the hospital. Um, but yeah, if y'all could pretty please just pray for her and her husband and check in on them. Um, it's not going to be, I don't think it's going to be a fun week this week. But, you know, we're sending up prayers that everything's going to be going to be good. Um, and that you will continue to make good choices. So do rest though. You know, I can tell you from personal experience, and I know you've, you know, sadly been through this a lot. But, you know, I can tell you from personal experience, you have to rest too. So I'm so super happy that you are filling your tummy with things that are good for you instead of for junk food because junk food might make you feel better for just a second, you know, for just that long. But then long term, you know, you're gonna, you're gonna be better able to help take care of him. Um, yeah, with some good food in your tummy and with some with some rest. Okay, so I digress. Um, if you did your homework, again, Bravo stickers. We had several people again, um, figured out that less points, they could, ha you know, um, be okay with less, um, you know, with a smaller serving of whatever the favorite was. Um, and had several people who substituted um, ingredients so that they could have, you know, their favorites, you know, but a lighter version. I did get the buffalo chicken dip. So Winstar Karen's buffalo chicken dip. I did finally get it up on the blog today, like literally moments before the chat started. Um, but I did finally get it up on the blog today. You'll have to excuse the little... Um, programming errors that are on there because I did it super fast. Um, Jessica is working on redoing the website. Hello, Teresa. Um, Jessica is working on redoing the website. So I haven't been posting a lot just because I know she's going to have to repost all of that, um, at, you know, as it comes. But that is the very first recipe that I have posted brand new that has um, blue, green, and purple. I need y'all to let me know, does it work okay just to show what the points are, blue, green, and purple in that main picture, or do you need me to still list it out? So just trying to streamline things, you know, and make them, and make them easier. Um, so yeah, so I did that, but that is one thing that y'all can substitute. That would be a great Super Bowl Sunday um, meal, or not meal, but snack. Um, I promise you, you're, the civilians in your life are not going to realize that it is WW friendly. They're not going to realize that. And honestly, I think it was better because um, it wasn't greasy. Um, it didn't sit so hard in my stomach. We had it three times this week. Three times this week. We had it the first time with celery. We had it the second time on Christmas Day at Casey and Allen's um, and Alyssa's with uh, tortilla chips with the scoops. And then the third time we used it to make um, mac mac macaroni and cheese. So we've had it. We have had it three times this week. Um, it's one point per serving. It's a quarter of a cup serving one point on blue green and purple so go check it out it is winstar karen's uh buffalo chicken dip one one and one one blue one green one purple super easy to make so much easier to make than the kind that you bake yeah and betty just said easy to make super easy to make like super simple okay and super fast too okay so Good job everybody did their homework last week. So that is what we talked about last week was holiday recipes. Um, ooh, and Alicia looked looked at it today and it looked okay to her and she's thinking about making it this week for sure. <gasps> Barbara, and Barbara says it's lightning in the crossroads. Okay, we'll keep it out there for a little while because we don't need to be interrupted. Okay, so this week what we talked about um, is, this week what we talked about is surviving 
the holiday. So it's chat number 154, how to survive, and then in parentheses they had, Weight Watchers had, and thrive throughout the holidays. So I'm going to read you again. I'm going to read you what the definition of survive is. So the definition of survive is to continue to live or exist, especially in spite of danger or hardship. Hmm. I'm sorry. I'm going to sidetrack a second. Susie, yes. If you do the whole, if you do the whole half of a cup of the wing sauce, then yes, it is spicy. But we did take uh, my uh, my Christie's advice, and we made a second one for people who um, we had made a second one for people who don't like spicy things. And instead of the wing sauce, we substituted G Hughes sugar-free barbecue sauce. And if you've never seen G Hughes, I'll have to post it for you later because I do not have time to go dig it out of the refrigerator. But we substituted G. Hughes sugar-free barbecue sauce, um, and we added just a little bit of crumbled bacon, but everything else stayed the same. So, and that was super yummy. A lot of people ate it, um, but it was that, that version was not spicy at all. So it was more like a barbecue bacon ranch, like a barbecue bacon ranch version. Um, Okay, but surviving, survive is to continue to live or exist, especially in spite of danger or hardship. So, I had already used the word survive like three times before we even really got into the chat. You know, we survived the holiday, we survived Christmas, we survived, you know, whatever. Okay, Christmas wasn't really dangerous, you know, in the sense of being wounded or really, you know, being in danger. Um, hardship? Yeah. I'm gonna say it's a hardship for a lot of people. A lot of people have big family get-togethers. You have things that are expected of you at Christmas. Um, you have, there's a lot of pressure at Christmas. Um, it's one of those holidays where, like when my grandmother was alive, one grandmother, mom's mom, super cool. Super cool, um, everything was chill. You know, we had, I don't know, she was like one of the most relaxed people that you ever met. Of course, she also fed us like bagel bites for breakfast. Seriously, she would feed us bagel bites with a piece of fruit um, for breakfast. My dad's mom, not so much. She was wound tight. I mean, she's one of the people, she's one of those people that was born old, if you know what I mean. And I don't mean old in a, in a cute, uh, you know, in the cute kooky grandma way. I mean, born old, like, like she was already cracking the whip and you whippersnappers, you know, need to do this. And yeah, I mean, like from birth, I think she was. Um, so she was my dad's mom was the high pressure you will hey orlando debbie we're so glad you're here she oh and orlando debbie look the would those not make awesome elsa nails um anyway she hello sally uh but she was the you will be here for like five hours you will eat this i will watch to see everything that's on your plate i will um Trisha is new with us. Hello, everybody. Welcome, Trisha. Hello. But she she was the one that was like, you know, you will have a full meal, you know, sit down, you know, sit down dinner, you know, whatever. Um, so she was the reason, she was the reason, yeah, Kathy, I know, but she was the reason that we were all under a lot of stress, you know, at the holidays. Um, I mean, we enjoyed, you know, being with family. We enjoyed the food. I mean, we really did enjoy the food, but she, you know, she was the reason that we were under a lot of stress. I know a lot of you all still have that situation. I know you do. You know, I mean, she seriously, she monitored the plates. Like she knew what you ate and she knew what you didn't eat. And she saw how much you took because she wasn't eating. And guess what? She was this big around. She was 5'7", and probably at her top weighed 120-ish, maybe, maybe. But she watched every, you know, she was like eyes on everybody. And if you didn't eat everything that was on your plate, you got the starving, ch you know, starving children in China, you know, story. Oh, and Sherelle, hello, Sherelle. Sherelle is also new to the group at C-H-E-R-R-E-L, C-H-E-R-R-E-L. Yep. So everybody, welcome Trisha and Sherelle. Very nice to meet you. But she, I mean, she monitored, she knew. But when we got that starving children in China speech, one time, one time, whew, I made the mistake of saying, well, why don't you send it to them? Oh my gosh, never again, never, ever, ever again. So some of you all are still under that kind of stress. Weight Watchers and me, 
have a little bit of advice for you so that you can thrive. Now, so you've already made it through Christmas. Hopefully all of your Christmas dinners are over. Ho hopefully all of those parties are over. But I don't know if you were listening a few minutes ago. I still have, and I know a lot of y'all still have other things coming up. I still have Casey's birthday tomorrow, Alyssa's birthday Tuesday, Casey and Ellen's anniversary Tuesday, New Year's Eve is Tuesday, New Year's Day is Wednesday, um, Alyssa's party is, her second birthday party is Saturday, Super Bowl Sunday is four weeks from Thursday. That's still a lot. That's still a lot coming up. But let me tell you the definition of thrive. So we already talked about survive. The definition of thrive is to grow or develop well or vigorously. So to grow or develop well or vigorously. So I choose to thrive. And I think that's why Weight Watchers snuck in or WW, sorry, snuck in that word thrive in there is because they want us to grow in this and they want us to develop and they want us to do that vigorously so that we can survive, you know, things like the holidays. So on our weekly for this week, they had 10 tips, three of which sounded to me like they were repeating each other. So I made up my own three tips my own three tips for you to thrive during the remainder of the holidays and honestly they're good tips for any time of the year but the first thing is the first thing i would say to do anybody that's got parties left to go to new year's eve new year's day granddaughter's second birthday you know whatever i would say first tip number one either take a buddy or make a buddy so if you have an opportunity to take a buddy who's already on this journey with you um so like karen and i you know, we're perfect to go to get perfect to go together because we already know. We already know what we can have. We already know, you know, we're kind of going, I don't know, did you check this out? You know, whatever. So if you can take a buddy with you, take somebody who's already on your team, who's already on your WW team with you. If you can't take a buddy with you, try to make a buddy once you get there. So try to figure out, you know, was it Aunt Martha last time, you know, last year that was kind of on my side, you know, was, you know, was it um, Uncle Joe that was doing um, WW or that was trying to watch his weight? Or, you know, try to pick that person. There's always, you know, if there's more than five, six people at this party, chances are somebody else is on a similar journey. Either they're watching their weight or they're watching their diet for some reason, or you know somebody else is on that journey, is on a similar journey. It doesn't have to be WW, but somebody else is on that kind of journey. Try to make a buddy. If you can't take one, try to make one so that y'all can team up, you know, team up and y'all can survive this party. You can thrive at this party. Okay, and let's see. Uh oh, Carol Lou survived the holidays and tomorrow she's gonna have skin cancer removed. Oh no, yes, you will survive that. You will survive that, yeah. Okay, then second thing, the second thing is be a party pooper. It is okay to be a party pooper. What I mean by that is it is okay to show up fashionably late. You do not have you don't have to be early for everything so be a party pooper and either be fashionably late so that everybody's gone through all the pomp and circumstance in the beginning and um, hopefully maybe they've already started nibbling or sampling food everybody's already made a big deal over the spread um it's kind of everything's kind of you know uh you know i don't know all the angst and anxiety of getting there and you know getting all the stuff done and whatever you know is already kind of you know chilled so either be fashionably late or you know what it is okay to say no to say no it is it's okay to say no there are going to be some parties you know if you've been invited to more than two three parties you know it's okay to pick one and say no i just did that so we have you know all y'all saw my list or you you know heard my list of things that are coming up i was invited to an extra party we were invited to an extra party I didn't say, oh, I can't come because I will have already wasted all, not wasted, not wasted. I can't come because I will have already spent all of my points, you know, at all these other parties that I have to go to this week. I just said, oh my gosh, thank you so much for inviting us. You know, I, we really appreciate it. And um, we're not going to be able to come this year. Please think about us, you know, for next time. I, have, I hope you have a wonderful time. You know, I hope you have a great turnout, you know, whatever. But it is okay. It's okay to say no. Okay. And let's see. So that's okay. It's either okay to be late or you can say no. You can say no to some parties. Or the third thing is to take a hike. So I know that sounds kind of rude, but by taking a hike, I mean, if there's an opportunity, take a hike, take a stroll, take a swim. If you're somewhere, you know, where that's, and you know, an option, um, go play, uh, you know, like a couple of the um, parties, you know, that I've heard people going to, there's a ping pong table or a pool table or something, you know, where you can take a hike, take a stroll, take a swim, take a dip, 
take a, you know, take a swing to, you know, take a whatever because you'll burn off some stress. It gets you away from the food. Um, you um, usually can find a friend, you know, to go with you to play ping pong or, you know, badminton or, or to take the stroll or to take the walk. It does give you, get you away from the food and you're going to earn some bonus fit points. So those are three super easy ways um, to thrive during the holidays. Um, you don't have to, you know, you don't have to do anything great, grand and, you know, magnanimous. You know, it can be just simple things like that. Just three simple things. Um, your homework for this week is going to be to name one way, one way during this holiday season it doesn't have to be this week but one day during this holiday season that you know that you thrived in a non scale related answer so I need you to pick something else besides weight loss so that's awesome if you lost weight this week or this you know during this holiday season it is awesome um, if that you hit goal it is awesome that you became a lifetime member those are all seriously seriously whoop, whoop, worthy things but i need everybody for their homework to pick something that has nothing to do with the scale so pick some way that you know and it can be funny i mean it can be funny like you didn't have to take tums or you know roll aids or that you didn't have to break out your buffet pants remember the buffet pants that we talk about um you know but that would be a non-scale way, way to know that you thrive during the holiday you didn't uh kill your brother-in-law or you know, something like that, you know, <coughs> you didn't cry, you didn't have to lock yourself in the bathroom and cry, you know, that would be, those, those would all be good ones. So, that is your homework this week. If you are following us on Instagram, just tag me in your homework. So, for the new people, all you do for your homework is, on Instagram, you're going to tag at, the little at symbol, if you have an egg, and just type out what your homework is, you can send, a, you can use a picture, that would be super funny if you would, you know, send us a picture of that. If you're here on the Facebook page where we're having this chat right now, where we're having this chat live on December the 29th, you can tag at if you have an egg and let me know what your um, what your uh, uh, success was thriving without it being um, scale related. Or if you're in our closed group, and if you're not in our closed group yet, maybe somebody will put the link up here, or I will do that when we get finished. But in the closed group, you're going to tag at Kelly Green Milligan, and that'll pop up, and it'll alert me that you that you posted your homework. Or if you are on WW Connect, you can tag at Scrap in Stamp 2, S-C-R-A-P, the letter N, S-T-A-M-P, and the number 2, and you can tag me there. Or if you're watching this on YouTube, you can go, um, you can just comment. So on YouTube, you can comment, um, and that would be awesome. So everybody do your homework. I uh, want to hear from you. We are getting ready to do um, part two, which I think is going to be funny. I think it's going to be really interesting. Um, so but give me just a second for my water, Barbara. It's time for water. So give me just a break to get a sip of water, and we'll be right back with the extra credit portion. So if you're brand new, just sit tight for just a second. And thank you, Claudie. Thank you for posting, for posting the, um, the closed group. And if you're new... If you want to join the closed group, please, please, pretty please, answer the three questions. If you don't answer the three questions, I can't let you in. Okay, I'll be right back. Whew, okay, that was a lot of fast talking. And we are back. And yes, Rosie, Barbara and Rosie, yes, water. But we are back. Today is Sunday, December the 29th. This was chat number 154, and it was titled How to Survive and Thrive Throughout the Holidays. For the extra credit portion, I have decided to copy Casey. So if she's here, she's going to know. Oh, no, it is not Camp No, no I'm sorry. Susie wants to know what my shirt says. It is Camp Nowhere. And still nobody has guessed that I've seen anyway. Nobody has guessed what this is from. Um, there's nothing Weight Watchers related on here at all. Nothing at all other than I love this. And Casey knows, Casey knows what this is about. Okay, but anyway, so, and thank you, Loretta. Um, so in part two in our extra credit, I have decided to copy Casey. She is doing for her, um, for her 2020, she is doing on her booktube channel, which is Bohan and Babel. So if any of you are also book lovers, oh, and Michelle, it's not a movie, but you're super close. Um, but if any of you are book lovers um, and you are interested in watching booktubers, um, watching people talk about books, Casey can hook you up. So her her channel is called Bohan and Babbles. But what she is doing for 2020, first of all, she is the world's best 
planner. Like she already knows, she already knows what vlog she's doing, what video she's doing for like the next, I don't even know how many weeks it is. But I am copying her in the A, I'm actually going to list what we are going to be talking about for the next few weeks so that I know ahead of time, instead of like two days before, what we're talking about or doing, whether it's going to be cooking something or testing something or trying out somebody else's recipe, which I want to do a lot of those this year. Um, but I'm going to make a list of what we're going to be talking about. If you have any ideas for things that you want me to talk about this year, um, please let me know. We already had somebody request that we talk about the Aaptive um, portion of your um, WW app and about the Headspace um, portion. So already had those written down and I'm going to put a date next to them so we know when we are doing them. And I'm going to try and start listing those ahead of time so that you all will know, oh, you know, this is a week that I definitely want to attend um, or this is a week that, yeah, I already know about that. Hopefully y'all will want to attend every week, but you know, there might be some weeks that you think, eh, yeah, you know, okay, yeah, I already know about that one. Or yeah, I definitely need to write that down because that's a date that I don't want to miss or that I want to invite, you know, some friends to. Okay, so the reason I'm copying Casey, what she is doing for her first few weeks um, on her vlog, and it's just Bohan and Babbles on YouTube, is she's gonna go back and look at um, books that she, um, no, Kathy, nope. She's gonna go back and look at books that she read over the last decade. So it was super cute. She posted um, some pictures for this first one of her 10 years ago, um, you know, and then what book she was reading. Anyway, it was, it was super cute. So we're not, I'm sorry, Vicki wants to know if the dip is better with fresh chicken or the canned chicken. I personally think it's better with the canned chicken. And Betty's exactly right. Yes, Betty, it is from Stranger Things, which has nothing to do with what we're talking about. But Casey got me this for Christmas and I love this shirt and I love ring tees. Okay, so Casey is, she's going back and talking about this last decade. So I thought that it would be super fun, super fun. And yes, I'm sorry, I think the canned chicken is better for the dip, Vicky. Sorry, I got sidetracked. Okay, so that means everybody who was here with us during the exercise um, video last year, you have to either do push-ups, I think it's push-ups or sit-ups when I get distracted. Anyway, so, or sidetracked. So, um, I thought that we would go back. This is a new decade. It is 2020. It's going to be 10 years before I get to say, it's going to be a new decade. It's going to be 10 years, and hopefully we will all still be here doing this in 10 years, but it will be 10 years before I can say that it's a new decade. And I thought, you know, this seems like a really fun idea to go back and review some things. So not only are we going to review the last decade, we're going to spend the next couple of weeks leading up into um, the Super Bowl because the week before the Super Bowl, we're going to be hard and heavy on WW friendly snack things. Okay. So the week before the Super Bowl, it's going to be all about WW friendly snack things. But leading up to that, I thought it would be super fun to go back into the vault and review um, WW from the beginning. Did you know it has been almost six decades since Gene Needich developed, introduced, started, created Weight Watchers in her, in her basement? Almost six decades, almost six decades. So I thought it would be super fun to go back, you know, and again, you know, go back in the vault and look at this just to see how much it's changed. Some of the things you're gonna go, wow, that sounds exactly like it is now. And some of the things you're gonna go, wow, I'm so glad that we are not on that same program. So some of these are really, really funny, really hilarious. First thing I need to know, if you are live with us here tonight, is there anybody, do we have anybody live with us here tonight that joined Weight Watchers in the 1960s? Is there anybody? Um, just give me a shout out, raise your hand. If there's anybody who's watching On Demand later, oh, Vicki got to see her when she was in junior high school. That's awesome. Um, is, but if you're watching this later on demand, just... Um, you know, just, you know, go ahead and tell me, but is there anybody who joined in the 60s? Pam, seriously, you joined in the 60s. That is awesome. That is so cool. Michelle's mom, you know, was a Weight Watchers member in the 60s. Um, that is so cool. Yeah, I didn't know. What? Vicki, you, Vicki, you joined in the 60s? Sandra was in the 60s? What year? 
Kathy joined in the late 70s. Yeah, we're going to go decade by decade. So this week will probably just cover the beginning, you know, like the 60s, like, you know, when it all started. And then we'll spend the next two weeks, um, you know, going over some lumps of time. Um, but so what we're going to talk about first is how this all started. So, and Myra was in the early 70s. Wow, Trish was 12 years old when she's, that's awesome. That is so awesome. And Barbara's, Barbara's mom did it in the early 70s. My mom did it in the 70s too. And I think she got Lifetime in like 1978 or something. I'm gonna have to go back and find her pen. Okay, and Tag still has a ton of the stuff and she didn't throw out much. What? That is so awesome. She's gonna have to go, she's gonna go back and look through it. Okay, so the original program, I would say in was 1969. That's, I was two, I was two years old. Okay, so the original program, Gene Needich in the 1960s um, had, like all of us, like all of us, she had done diets, lost weight, gained weight, lost weight, gained weight, lost weight, gained weight, wasn't having much success. And she thought, you know, this is crazy. This is crazy. When Vicky says five fish, three beef, and one liver. Okay, she was like, this is crazy. You know, I, I'm trying to do this by myself. I keep having a little bit of success and then I keep, you know, and then I keep failing, you know, because I'm trying to do this by myself. So she got a group of friends together um, in the 60s and she um, got them together in her basement and she started having a meeting. So, it's, so this was based around, it was developed, um, it was based around a diet that had been developed by the New York City Department of Health, the New York City Department of Health Bureau's nutrition guide. And so they took that, um, she had signed up for a program, uh, wait, Long I, Nidich. Oh, it's Nid, really? Because Gwen, hmm, our leader pronounces it Nidich, but Nidich, uh, Jean Nidich. Okay, so I'll pronounce that. I'll pronounce it that way, Jean Nidich, Jean. But anyway, so she had signed up for one of their programs and she just had a bunch of friends come over and she was like, okay, you, we all are having the same, you know, similar problem, you know, so um, they all just, you know, met and started talking about it. So back in the 60s, um, she, so they started out at her house, then they moved to, um, they had to move to a larger meeting hall in like 1963-ish, like in the early 60s, um, and then, you know, it just kept growing and growing and growing and growing and growing. So, if anybody has one of her old books, that would be so hilarious, you know, to see some of those things. But some of the things that she talked about originally in her original plan, I just want you to listen and see if they sound familiar. So remember, this is from 60 years ago. So this was 1963. This is getting ready to be 2020. So these are almost six decades old. But listen and see if any of these sound familiar. The first thing she said was that overeating is a habit. So it's just like any other habit. You can conquer it, you know, but you just get in the habit, you know, of, of overeating. I think that's probably still true today. Um, she suggested that people proceed with their weight loss one meal at a time, one meal at a time, then one day at a time, and then one week at a time. So to take little steps so that you could learn, you know, conquer one, conquer one meal, and if you can conquer one meal, then the next day, maybe you can conquer a whole day. And then after you've conquered a few days, you can conquer a whole week. Okay. So I thought that was, you know, that one was a good one. Learn to delay gratification. So how many of us are guilty of needing, and it's getting worse. It's getting worse as the years are going on. That need for instant gratification, you know, it's like shopping too. You know, you see something on the shelf and you think, I need that right now. Um, you know, if you can make yourself wait for it. A lot of times you're not really hungry. She says no crash dieting. So no, you know, no um, not eating calories, you know, not substituting 200 calories of food, you know, for 200 calories of cake, you know, no, no crash dieting. Um, try to control, the next thing was to try and control your environment. So, you know, remember we were talking about surrounding yourself with, um, you know, finding a buddy, finding a buddy or making a buddy. That's exactly what she did. That's exactly what Jean did 60 years ago. She found some buddies. She, cr she controlled her environment. She made sure that they had, you know, that they, you know, that they surrounded themselves with things that they could um, use to be successful. Learn to laugh. She was apparently quite funny. Um, I'll have to go back and find some of the, um, some of the things, you know, some of the sayings that she said, but, um, but you do, you have to learn to laugh at yourself because if we take this so seriously, you know, if we don't have fun doing this, you know, none of us are going to make it very long. This one was kind of funny. She said, no alcohol, no skipping meals, and no counting calories. So even though it's all about a calorie deficit, you know, it's all about making sure that we are in a calorie deficit, she said, no alcohol. 
So who could do Weight Watchers today? Now, I don't, I don't drink alcohol, but in 2020, how many people would be able to stick to the Weight Watchers program if there was no alcohol and no skipping meals? That was definitely a 60 year ago, um, you know, idea. No excuses. You know, you can stick to the program no matter what. So it's getting easier every time they advance the program. It's getting easier, you know, easier and easier to stick uh, to, for excuse, to have no excuses. Um, this one I love. She says, if you stick to the plan, the plan will work. How many times have I heard somebody in one of our um, WW meetings, one of our sit down, you know, in person meetings that says, you know, it's funny if you track, you know, if you track or if you do what you're supposed to do, you know, you'll lose weight. If you honestly do what you're supposed to do, you'll lose weight. And then she wants to remind everybody that maintenance is important. So you need to be able to maintain, even if you're not at your goal weight, you know, if you, if you need to put yourself into temporary maintenance or intentional maintenance, um, you know, just to maintain, you know, you can. Um, and she says to be successful on the program, it will require your desperation, your desperation to be, your, your, to be more desperate, to be thinner, healthier, stronger than, you know, than to not be. Um, your sincerity, you got to be honest about it, your cooperation and your patience. Okay, so these, this is the funny thing. These are the funny things. You could only eat foods that were listed on your menu plan. If the foods did not appear on the menu plan, they were off limits. You could not eat them, could not eat them. Eggs, hmm. Remember, if you have an egg, you have hope. Remember that? Eggs, you had to limit them to four to seven per week, and you could only eat them at breakfast or lunch, never for dinner. You could never have eggs for dinner. Okay, I don't really know what the I don't know what the thought process was behind that, but you couldn't have them at dinner. Um, this was in, in the 1960s. Remember, cheese you could only have hard cheese or pot potted cheese. I don't know what that is. So cottage cheese or farmer's cheese? What is farmer's cheese? Um, and it's allowed only at breakfast or lunch. You could never have it for dinner. Don't know why. Does anybody know why? Fish. You had to eat a minimum of five servings of fish from group A, and we're going to find out what group A is here in just a second, each week for lunch and dinner. Lunch and dinner. You had to. Group A fish is abalone, bass, bluefish. Do people even have this? <laughs> Bonito, butterfish, carp. Okay, fresh carp. I live in East Tennessee. We see carp a lot. We fish near carp, we feed carp at some of the restaurants that are around here. N nobody needs to be eating any carp. If it's carp like we have, mm -mm, no, 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 no. But clams, crab, croaker, whatever that is, cod, um, fin and haddie, flounder, fluke, haddock, cake, halibut, lobster, anyway, there's a whole bunch of them. Trout, like that would be good. Tuna fish, fresh or canned. Um, shrimp and some others. Okay, so but you had to have a minimum of five group A fish and you could only have it for dinner or lunch. Uh, well, you should have it at dinner or lunch. Meat and poultry, if you, if, as long as, as long as you had, yeah, and Barbara knows what I mean, no way on carp. Yeah, and Teresa says we don't eat carp, no. No, 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 no. I would lose a lot of weight. Um, meat and poultry, if you ate your minimum number of fish, for the day or for the week if you had your minimum number of fish then you could uh, you could select from the group a meats or of poultry and group b fish but you had to meet your minimum on the group a fish first and you could have a maximum of five weekly meat meals lunch or dinner only from group a and a maximum of three weekly meat meals lunch or dinner out of group b Let's see, Betty says, any catfish? Let me just go back here and look real quick. I do not see catfish. I do not see catfish on that list. Okay, the group A, meat and poultry, is white is uh, is um, white meat from chicken, the, the skin removed. That sounds familiar. White meat turkey, skin removed. That sounds familiar. Pheasant, organ meats. Ooh, liver, lungs, brains, kidney hearts and sweetbreads what is a sweetbread i don't know what that is i don't know what that is yeah not happening for me and then group b meat and poultry and remember you had to complete all of your group a fish 
first before you could have this was beef frankfurters lamb dark meat or dark meat turkey group b fish i know barbara this is 60 years ago oh yeah i know barbara says i'm already confused no kidding no kidding that's why we're doing this little you know history lesson is just to remember where we came from group b fish is mackerel um pompano whatever that is fresh salmon shod and whitefish shad sorry shad and whitefish you had limited vegetables oh no carol said sweet breads is intestines okay oh no okay so i couldn't have done this in the 60s so ladies who were doing this in the 60s my gosh my hat is off to you that is horrible 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 so how this continued i don't even know but anyway they had limited you could had limited vegetables limited vegetables you had to eat one a day at dinner only at dinner only what kind of chart did they have going on for this i mean did everybody have like a like a i don't like john has his flip chart things you know did everybody have a spreadsheet at home that listed all this stuff and you went through and checked it off every day this is insane this is crazy it's crazy but you had to eat at least one of these vegetables a day um at dinner only and one portion only um this, these are the limited vegetables limited vegetables but you it's weird they're limited but you had to eat one a day and that includes artichokes bamboo shoots beets brussels sprouts carrots eggplant green beans okra onions parsnips peas pumpkin <coughs> scallions squash yellow squash tomatoes tomato juice or turnips almost everything on there is now a zero point food almost everything on there now is a zero point food how lucky are we? They've limited it. I can't, I can't imagine being limited to green beans, to one serving of green beans a day. Just one. The unlimited vegetables that could be eaten at any time, what they consider to be non-starchy vegetables, was asparagus, beet greens, broccoli, cabbage, cauliflower, celery, Chinese cabbage, cucumber, endive, escarole, bell pepper, kohlrabi, lettuce, mung bean sprouts, mushrooms, mustard greens, parsley pickles, Pimentos, radishes, rhubarb, sauerkraut, spinach, green squash, string beans, fridge style, and watercress. So yellow squash was considered a starchy vegetable and green squash was not a starchy vegetable. Very restrictive. Condiments and seasonings such as bouillon, herbs, and spices. Salt and pepper, paprika, vinegar, and wine vinegar, tea, coffee, horseradish, soy sauce, lemons, and limes are unlimited. Thank goodness coffee was unlimited. Um, fruit, three to five servings a day, depending on age or gender. One daily must either be an orange or a grapefruit. So every day you had to eat either orange or grapefruit as one of your fruits. The other permitted fruits were one apple, a half of a cantaloupe, that's a lot, a half of a grapefruit, um, a two inch wedge of honeydew, that's not very much. So you could have a half of a cantaloupe or a two inch wedge of, of honeydew, one orange, a fourth, of a medium-sized pineapple, that's a lot of pineapple, a cup of strawberries, that sounds good, half a cup of raspberries or blueberries, one peach or nectarine, two apricots, or a plum. The forbidden fruits, you were never to have these, never, ever, never, ever, never, never, never to have these. Bananas, cherries, watermelon, what? Grapes, I'm done. I'm already done. I eat grapes or bananas every single day. Yeah, grapes or dried fruits. The dried fruits I understand. Powdered skim milk, buttermilk or evaporated milk must be included in your daily diet. So you had to drink some form of milk every single day. And it depended on your age and your gender, um, how much you had of that. Bread, you could eat enriched or whole grain packaged bread according to the amount you know of your age or gender. But no rolls, none no bagels, no biscuits, no muffins, no crackers, no cereal, and no special breads. No special breads. What? Yeah, how did you all survive this? And now, you know, now the program that we're on now is looking pretty sweet, isn't it? And again, over the next couple of weeks, we will go over several, we're going to go over several, we're going to go over all the decades just to see how, you know, how much it's changed. Because I just, I don't know, I thought it was interesting to see how much it had changed. So things you could not eat. So you could not eat these. They were actually called, it was called illegal or, you know, you had legal food and illegal food. So the things that were considered um, to be, you could not drink or eat any of these things. No alcoholic beverages, including beer, wine, or whiskey. 
That was a funny comment to make. No avocado. What do they have against avocado? Why has avocado been on the been on the no-no list from the beginning? It's so good for you. No bacon. I'm out. I am out. No bagels, no biscuits, no cake, no candy, no cereal, no coconuts, no cookies, crackers, cream cream cheese, no cream cheese, no donuts, no fried foods, no gefilte fish. I'm, I know I said that wrong. No gravy, no honey, no ice cream, no ices of any kind, no jam, no jello. You couldn't have jello. <laughs> no jelly, no ketchup, no mayonnaise, no muffins, nuts, oil. Oil? You couldn't have oil? How did y'all cook anything? Olives, pancakes, peanut butter, done. Count me out. Count me out. Peanut butter, pies, popcorn, potato chips, pretzels, rolls, salad dressing, smoked meat or fish, soda, ginger ale, cola drinks, no soft drinks, no sugar or syrups, no waffles, and no yogurt. No yogurt. Most of you all are done. <laughs> Most of you all are already finished. Okay, so an example of a meal of a you know of a daily of a daily meal plan, you know, from back then. Um, oh, Alicia says coconut pies made with cauliflower. What? What does that even mean? What does that mean? Um, a, and the sample breakfast is one egg or one ounce of hard cheese or two ounces of fish or a quarter cup of cottage cheese and one slice of enriched bread. Mmm. Mmm. Wow. That sounds filling and yummy. I think I'll just skip to lunch. But remember, she said no skipping meals. An example of lunch is four ounces of fish, canned or fresh, or lean meat or poultry, or two to two thirds of a cup of cottage cheese. But remember, you could only have the meat or poultry if you had already gotten your five servings of fish, of group A fish. You could only have it then. Um, or two ounces of hard cheese, or two eggs, all the unlimited vegetables you want, and one slice of enriched bread. Yeah, and Rosie says, did every meal have to be eaten at home? It would have to be. You couldn't go to anybody else's house. <laughs> you, Yeah, and Sylvia says, I would starve. Yeah, exactly. Din example of dinner is six ounces of cooked lean meat or fish or poultry, one portion of limited vegetables, all of the unlimited vegetables that you want. But remember, at some point during the day, you had to have a total of three fruits. One of them had to be an orange or a grapefruit two cups of skim milk or buttermilk and one or of or one cup of skimmed evaporated milk yeah by then you're starving so you're probably just going to guzzle the milk maybe with an orange um but at any time of the day you can have any of the unlimited foods you know or beverages so yeah so that was a quick look back at the 1960s um don't think any of us would be on the plan uh you know, today as it was back then um sounds like um, oh yeah I and mean, actually Tag is saying what I was just thinking let's see in the in the 60s they had very few artificial sweeteners and little low fat or no fat foods so basically you were you were extremely limited so yeah and Loretta most of the bread was off the list except for one slice of enriched bread at you know at two of the meals so really limited um true you did not have to count. True, you did not have to count calories. True, you did not have to um, track because it was so limited, you know, on what you could eat. Um, there are a lot of other weight loss plans right now, you know, this last decade, and I'm sure coming into this next decade, that are this restrictive. So just keep in mind when, you know, when we're tracking, we're tracking everything all of the glorious bounty of things that we are allowed to eat so we're tracking our bananas because we're eating bananas we're tracking our eggs because we can have eggs for supper if we want them we're tracking our um biscuits because we can have a biscuit if we you know if we want it um so just remember all these other diets that people talk about that are so restrictive so restrictive um Oh, and Debbie's talking about, yeah, Debbie's talking about um, vitamins. Um, and a lot of y'all are talking about the nasty, nasty, nasty um, diet drinks that, you know, that used to be in there. And somebody earlier was talking about making your own ketchup because you weren't allowed to have, because ketchup wasn't one of the okay, you know, condiments to have. So that was a quick look back at the 1960s. This is a six decade um, plan in progress. Um, I think it's still going to be fun to go back and look, you know, just like it's fun to look at old pictures and just go, oh, that was so cute, you know, in the 1950s and 60s, you know, 
men would come home and their wives would be wearing a little apron and a bow and her hair, you know, and just have everything so-so. And the kids would be quietly, you know, sitting there waiting, you know, for Papa to come home and get to put his slippers and his pipe in his mouth. You know, it's fun to look back at stuff like that. So I think this is going to be fun. I hope you'll join me for the next couple of weeks because um, I really do think it's going to be fun to look back, you know, just to look back and see, you know, and see where we came from. And I'm hoping by the end of, by the end of the couple of weeks that we can, um, you know, that we can enjoy and appreciate, you know, the programs that we have now. So anyway, we're going to do that for the next couple of weeks. Um, I think it's going to be super fun. Then after that couple of weeks, Super Bowl Sunday, we will be all things um, WW friendly, WW smart, um, you know, snacks. I do highly recommend that everybody go try to make Winstar Karen's buffalo dip. I'm telling you, get some practice in. Get some practice in for the Super Bowl. You are going to want to use that for all of your parties, all of your, you know, whatever. It's one point, blue, green, and purple. It was okay. I mean, it was great. It was good with the celery. It was awesome with the tortilla scoops i could have twice as many scoops because it was only one you know point blue green and purple but anyway i um i highly recommend everybody to go check out that recipe it's on if you have an egg.com i'm gonna let you all go um the next week we are gonna visit two more decades i think we'll try to do the 70s and 80s next week um i think it's gonna be fun you know looking at um you know looking at the different plans <clears throat> if anybody has any pictures if you have any pictures or any um program material i would love for you to share it so that we can um, so that we can look at it i'd love to see you know because we were talking about the old sliders and things um, and for people who haven't seen that i just think it would be a hilarious you know a hilarious look back on those um but i hope you enjoyed this i hope you will join us again next week i hope you will do your homework so don't forget if you're watching this later on youtube the next video is right here and we have, um, you can subscribe. If you subscribe on YouTube, please remember to click the little bell so that you'll be notified when the next video comes up, when this week's video gets posted. And over here, you can order a spread shirt. Thank you to everybody that was here tonight. Remember to tell Casey happy 26th birthday tomorrow. And remember to wish Alyssa a happy second birthday on Tuesday. Everybody have a great new year. Um, I will talk to you at some point in between now and then. But happy new year, and I will see you again in 2020. 20. Happy New Year, everybody. See you later.